Tom Forrest has an elaborate plan to trap the poachers denuding Fairbrother's estate. He's ostensibly gone away, but had himself picked up at a nearby railway halt by Phil Archer, who agreed to watch out the night with him through to dawn's morning. Last night also, Walter Gabriel, employing Ned Larkin and Len Thomas to switch fire grates between his farm and Honeysuckle Cottage, to which he's moving, was interrupted by the arrival of the new owner, Thorpe Winford. Walter hustles Len and Ned out. Why, bless me soul, if it ain't Mr. Winford. What the devil are you doing in there, tearing the place down? I'm tearing it down? Oh, no, 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 what, me? Oh, I, I, you ain't coming in, am you, Mr. Winford? I most certainly am. <coughs> oh, Oof. what's all this brick dust flying about? Oh, well, uh, it's mice. Mice? Yeah, yes, that's right, mice. And what might be the meaning of this, this object? Eh? This cracked, battered mongrel of a grate that's leaning against the wall? Oh, I, well, I was going to put that one in its place, Mr. Winford. Oh, were you? Yes, all in your best interest, of course, you know. You see, I worked it out that by, by putting a cracked grate in, I'd smoke out them mice, you see, and they'd You're be a liar. Beg pardon? You're welcome to the damn thing. I'd have had it torn out in any case. Oh. There's a lot of remodelling to be done here to make the place habitable. You've saved me the trouble. Have it out. Take it off and flog it. And make a few shillings on it. It's a ghastly looking thing anyway. But don't put that cracked one back in. Uh, yes, Mr. Winford. Uh, I mean no, Mr. Winford. Now look here. Let's get down to brass tacks. See? I'm not the sort to beat about the bush. I'm bringing my son down here next week. Oh. Whether you're out or whether you're not. And you won't be, because my arrangement with Fairbrother doesn't become operative while Lady Day. We want to put some essential work in hand. Understood? Yes, Mr. Winford. Understood. So all that remains now is to fix the exact amount of your upset money to make sure that you do get out with Lady Day. Now for the haggling. And I don't care if I stay here all night, but we're going to settle it. Right? Right, Mr. Winford. And my son and I are coming down next week and we've got permission to move in for surveying and tendering purposes and we're coming right in. Right. Right, Mr. Winford. Well, go on then. Take the dust covers off those chairs and get a bottle and a couple of glasses and see that this is going to take some time. Is that you, Phil? Yes, Uncle Tom. You hear that blooming dog? Something must have disturbed him. Yeah. Let him go, wasn't he? Yeah, he certainly was. Ah, not bad timing, lad. Ten past twelve. Huh. Any signs? Not up the top, no. What about you? No, oh, not in long cover yet. Yeah. It's a right night, though. Moon with a bit of scudding clay and a bit of wind. Mm. You do all right today? What, up in Diana Hood's shed? Yeah. <laughs> I had myself a bit of sleep, too. Oh, God. <laughs> I wasn't disturbed. Now, look, Phil. Mm. There's only you and me and Fairbrother knows as I ain't in Fordin Bridge. I swear. Mm. Except the ticket collector at Merton Hall where I picked you up. Mm, well, he don't matter. Mm. Now, I went through the top half of the dogs just on dusk, Phil. Uh -huh. Pushed most of the birds down this way. And I reckon this is where they'll have to come to find them. Uh, what do we do, then? Well, keep a quiet patrol through the whole cover. Mm -hmm. If here's nothing, meet back here. Same spot every hour. All right? Yeah. All right, then. Right. Off you go, then. I'll be as quiet as you can, lad. Yeah. Right out. Wasting our time. I'm not so sure, Phil. There's still mm. time. That twilight between dark and dawn, for example. Mm. How long to dawn? An mm, hour and a half, officially. Mm. Well, the moon's still there. Mm. They're easy enough to see sitting. I've seen them myself. Get under them and got a silhouette up there as big as a bus. Mm. Did I hear that? Uh, yes, I heard that. It's that 410 merchant, not the three brothers. He's about, Phil. Any idea of the direction? I don't need much idea. I've picked up enough of his empty cases. Now, he'll work down either this side of the cover or on the other. Yeah, it's hard to tell which side is operating, though, isn't it? His cases are always about four yards in. No more. Uh, All we got to do is separate and move quietly through the cover uh -huh. and keep about 50 yards apart. Right. Now, don't rush it. Take it steady. Uh -huh. We'll hear him having another go or two. We're bound to come up with him. All right, then. Let's put up. Now, then, you got your whistle? Yeah. Don't forget, then. If either of us comes up with him, we grabs him, then we blows our lungs out. And if we don't get the devil tonight, I'll chuck me job in. That's what I'll do. Right. Off we go, then. Barry, 
Got one almost at me feet. Go on, pick it up, you lout. Then I can have you. What are you doing with that bird? Huh? What's it? All right, you monkey. Come on, the game's up. Why, you, Tom! Oh! Oh! That's a duck up, you won't, is it? All right, my duty. Give me that gun! You swine, you! Let go of it, blaster! No! Get out, you! Trying to push it down my throat, are you? Let go of that gun, you fool. I'll give you a right old face. Come oh. I know you now, you rascal. Bob Larkin. Uncle Tom! Uncle Tom! Over here! Well, hold on, like that! Oh, my wrist! Leave go then! Go on, let go! Oh. Uncle Tom! Uncle Tom, are you all right? Uncle Tom! Here, quick, bring your torch. Hurry, Phil. What's happened? Why, oh, you're covered in blood. I'm all right. Shine it on him down there. It's Bob Larkin. Bob Larkin? Oh, my God. What's well, awful. Bob Larkin. Yeah. It was. We fell through the bushes. We were struggling for the four tenure. We had it between us. Well, well, don't touch it. Don't touch anything. Now, you just stay here. Well, well, somewhere around. I I can't believe it. Well, don't move him. Don't do anything. There you are. Look, here's the torch. Now, you just stick around. I'll be as quick as I can. Where are you going? To get a doctor, you don't. But stay with him. Now, but, but don't move him. Don't go near him. And don't panic, at least try not to. Oh, oh dear. Blast the phone. Oh, blimey. Can't even finish my morning sleep out. Ambridge Police, PC Bryden speaking. Mr. Bryden, it's Phil Archer speaking. Yeah? Where are you speaking from? Uh, uh, Heather Lane call box. We were in long cover and, and there was a fight. Have you called the doctor? Yes, before I called you. All right, I'll be right up. Where's the nearest point? Third field gate on the left, past this call box. I'll be there as soon as I can. Meet me at the gate. And make sure nobody touches anything at the scene until I get there. Yeah. Uh, clear the line now while I get some other things moving. Right. Number, please. Hollerton 2804. Make it snappy. Hollerton 2804. Hollerton Police, PC Foxwell speaking. Foxy, it's Jeff Bryden. Give me the super, quick, will you? The super? At this time? You won't be very pleased. I can't help it, chum. I've got a shooting. It's GBH or worse. Oh, right oh, Hang on. You're through. Superintendent Browning. Uh, PC Bryden, sir. Ambridge. I've just had a report in, sir, from the Fairbrother estate of a fight with a poacher. There's been a shooting. It could be GBH or worse. Oh. Uh, the man who's phoned in is a pretty level-headed chap. He wouldn't exaggerate. He's, uh, he's manager up there. All right. Anybody call the doctor? Uh, yes, he did. He called our local man. I don't know whether he's arrived yet, though, sir. Uh, you'd better get up there and keep their big feet up everything. Mm. I'll get in touch with the CID and see if I can get the DI fixed up with a wireless car. He'll follow you out as soon as he can. He can call back if he wants a photographer from headquarters. How do we get there? Now, come to Heather Lane call box on the Nettleton Road. I'll see somebody's there to direct you. Heather Lane call box. Nettleton, Nettleton Road. Nettleton Road. Yeah. Nettleton Road. You haven't got any more details yet, of course. Uh, no, sir. No, I only just heard. All right. You'd better get up there straight away, Brighton. And don't let them muck up the whole scene. Very good, sir. Goodbye. Right. Well, Doctor? I'm afraid he's dead, Philip. Well, ain't there anything you can do for him? Nothing could survive those injuries, Tom. I'm sorry. No. Well, it was an accident, wasn't it? Yes, I... We were struggling for possession of the uh, gun. Doctor, you didn't move the body. No, Constable. Oh. It wasn't necessary. All right, thanks, sir. Instantaneous, was it? Must have been. Six to eight inches rage, I suppose. No more. Tom could do with something to steady him. Uh, I don't know whether the detective inspector would approve of that, Doctor. I'd better have a word with him. Now, look, Tom. He put up the gun as out of threatening. Well, I had to jump in and grab. We were trying to twist it out of each other's grip when we fell and it went off. I, I swear I never touched the trigger. I couldn't have. Good God Almighty, if it had been pointing two inches this way, I should have had it. We, well, we were struggling. Yes, 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 I know, Tom, you told me. Yeah, that's true. I got a glimpse of them struggling as I ran through. Then they just disappeared from my sight. They went down together, sort of. Oh, you can see he was poaching. Got that bag there on his back with half a dozen birds in it. And, and that and over there as he was just picking up when I jumped on him. Now, look, I, 
I was standing there seeing it. He come down through this road. Took a bird from not more than 30 yards away, I swear. It landed right here. Uh, and... No, no, Tom. Keep away from there, if you don't mind. Let's have the whole of this area kept as clear as possible. Don't go walking. But I want to tell you what Yes, happened. yes, you have already. But if I were you, I wouldn't say too much until the D.I. gets here. He shouldn't be above ten minutes for a quarter of an hour now, and he's sure to want to hear about it. Uh, Doctor, yes? if you're going back to your car, I wish you'd just wait there until the detective inspector arrives and um, show him which way to come. Yes, of course I will. Sorry, Tom, old boy. Bad luck. Bob Larkin, though. Bob Larkin, oh dear, whatever will Ned say? Yeah, no, no, no. come on, Uncle Tom. Have a cigarette. Right, come on. Right. Dawn's coming up. Maybe things won't seem so bad in daylight. And that's all I know, Inspector. It happened so quick. I came running as soon as I heard his whistle, and I just saw them fall. Well, it wasn't as light as it is now, and I couldn't be sure exactly what happened. But as I've said, he... Do we have to stay here, Inspector? Can't we get away from that, from Bob? I'm afraid you'll have to wait just a bit longer. Well, what's all this hanging about for? It's this hanging about, hanging about yeah, here. Yeah, I, I know, Uncle Tom. Well, Bryden? Well, much the same story he told me when I arrived half an hour ago, sir. You know him, though, eh? Oh, yes, sir. Uncle and nephew. Same employer. Uh, young one's the farm manager and the other's the gamekeeper. Victim is the brother of a local farm worker. Hmm. All right. We'll talk about him later. Relieve May in the body now. Yes, sir. May, come here. Look, Donald. Go back to the car, call up the old man, and tell him I say we'll want the full treatment. Photographers, bloke from the forensic science laboratory and everything. And see if you can send over a couple of uniform chaps to relieve Bryden on the body till they arrive. Got that? Yes, sir. Okay, off you go, then. Damn chilly morning. He swung that 410 liner up towards me, you see, sir. I had to close with him and try to grab it in case he used it. And then, when we fell over through that hazel clump there, well, I don't know what happened. It went off. I saw them crash through there and heard the bang. Well, I must tell you I'm arresting you, Mr. Forrest. What? Arresting? Yes. Arresting you on a charge of killing that man there, who I understand is identified as Bob Larkin. Murder? But, but, You're but... not obliged to say anything in answer to the charge, but anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. Uh... I never murdered anybody in my life. Of course he didn't. That's not for you to decide, Mr. Archer, or me, or the prisoner here. That's something that can only be decided in a court of law. Sorry, Mr. Forrest, but I'm going to have to take you in. <laughs> 